I'm in red form In a red state, such a red case on a red song In a shared space with my shareholders cause we share a bond Spiritual healthcare, that's real self-care, you won't care for I got my Mets hat on to the back Y'all already know where we going with the stats Any artist that's talking garbage and try to curse us Y'all follow a wave and do whatever's current I follow his ways, I know my turn is coming Welcome to New York Giants Full Access Add it to the cart and we got you and That's it man, go purchase Big Pass Sports Talk merch and support the family man and welcome to big pass sports talk thank you for your support what's going on youtube instagram twitter all platforms welcome to another episode of new york giants full access with your boy big pass sports talk and today's subject is will giants offensive line coach og bobby johnson be on the hot seat if the offensive line does not perform well against the Arizona Cardinals this coming Sunday and they struggle against a Cardinals defense will his job be on the line my answer before we get into it it's probably a, a, a lukewarm yes I don't think you fire your offensive line coach midseason but if it gets that bad Hey, we seen that we got rid of Mark Colombo when him and Joe Judge came to blows. And a lot of eyes are looking at Bobby Johnson as far as this offensive line not being able to produce. So, what we have to look at is the players that he has. Andrew Thomas. Top tackle in the league. Ben Bredesen. I mean, decent. John Michael Schmitz, second round pick. Glowinski, he was a good right guard before he came here. And Evan Neal has struggled since he was drafted here, number seven overall by the New York Giants. And his whole tenure has been with Bobby Johnson. So. This is a, a case to where you ask yourself, is this man being asked to make chicken salad out of chicken you know what? Or does he have tools in his toolbox and he just doesn't know how to use them and he doesn't know how to groom them to become good players? When you look at the career of Mark Lewinsky, he was not that bad at the Colts, but he comes here and he looks like an absolute player that shouldn't even be in the NFL. You have a top seven drafted tackle. Now, whether you consider him a bust or not, he was drafted top 10. And he did very well at multiple positions at Alabama. You have Andrew Thomas, who has not regressed. He's continued to be himself, but he built himself. He built himself into what he is today, despite of coaching. Because if it was just based off coaching, he would have been terrible because Mark Colombo and whoever they brought in over after Colombo were terrible. But he made himself very good by training in the offseason, working on his weaknesses and turning them into strengths. Ben Bredesen was a trade from the Ravens. Don't know too much about him before he got here with the New York Giants, but he was one of our better offensive linemen last year. And it's looked like he's regressed just a little bit, but Ben Bredesen, he does know how to pick up a stunt. Is he perfect? No, but I kind of give him a pass. My co-founders, uh, they tend to think the other way around and I can't blame them. John Michael Schmitz, he's doing what he was doing at college at Minnesota, so. I don't see him having a huge learning curve to become a very good center in this league. So what 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 is he missing with this offensive line? Because I'll tell you, uh, is is it a lack of talent? Maybe because Glowinski was good before he came here. 
Evan Neal was a top draft pick. John Michael Schmitz was a second round pick. And Andrew Thomas was Andrew Thomas before he got here. So when you really look at the talent amongst the offensive line, there's talent there. Whether you believe it or not, Ben Bredesen, he was decent. I'm not saying he's a world beater, but he, he, he was decent. Something you can work with. He's, he's an offensive guard that you can have on your team when the offensive line is developed. So, it's not like he just has absolutely nothing to work with on the offensive line. I believe Azudu is a, is a talent that you can work with. I believe McKeithen is a talent that you can work with if they stay healthy. So, what is it about Bobby Johnson that is not doing very well? And we're going to look at some stats and everything. We're going to hear him talk. And then we're going to look at some stats from him when he was with the Bills. So let's get into it. All right, here we go. Let's listen to Coach Bobby Johnson speak on the interchanging of the guard position at on the offensive line throughout the offseason. Let's hear him talk real quick. I think the guard rotation in camp prevented maybe chemistry from forming yeah, with a I five. So. I don't think so. I mean, I know a lot of people think that, but I mean, it's no, I, I know that. I'm just saying it, that the same thing could be said of like, hey, you get a guy injured hypothetically and they miss time and then they go back in. It's just, that's the nature of the league. There's a lot of people, I mean, people get hurt, people miss time, and there's a lot of things. So I, I, don't, I don't think that was a culprit. I think this, that, uh, you know, I don't think that had a, that had a role in it. So as you listen to him speak right there about the interchanging of the offensive line, especially at the guard position, uh, what he said is pretty true. P people do get hurt. You have to put people in certain positions. But the way that he spoke, he wasn't like truly confident in the way that he spoke about that question. And... To be honest with you, when you when your offensive line performs the way that they did with the uh, against the Cowboys, it's gonna be kind of hard to talk with a little boast in your voice and a little braggadocious in your voice when you had a performance like that. I can understand that, but I leave this question to you guys: the, Is Ben Bredesen really not having a a, a spot locked down in, in training camp? Zudu not having a spot locked down in training camp? Did that hurt this team? Did that hurt this team that all those different lineup formations going on in the offseason um, this year, training camp and everything, did that hurt them this year? I don't know. You guys answer that question. But let's hear some more from Bobby Johnson. We've been liking you guys' room this week in the locker room. Uh, pretty typical. I mean, ready to learn, ready to improve, ready to uh, move on to the next game, kind of like we have. Yeah. Where do you start with corrections from balance? Uh, just like any game, you know, you kind of go back and look at what you did wrong, uh, what was the, the cause of it, you know. Um, more often than not, you find out it's more you than, than the opponent. Um, and then you move on to what you did well, and then you move on to the next game. You got to try to put a book, you know, close on as fast as you can. So, Mr. Bobby Johnson, as you can see, they asked him a question. What did you do now after the offensive line performance that you put up against the Dallas Cowboys? They asked him, what do you do now? And he basically gave an answer that you already know that you're going to get. You got to look at the film. He's saying maybe it was a lot more to do with us than them saying that it was a lot more to do with our offensive line not producing than the Cowboys just being that doggone good. And if so, that comes back to coaching. What are they being coached up to do? And what I'm going to have to do is after this Cardinals game, really dig up what the offensive line goals are under Coach Bobby Johnson. Because Brian Dabo can't do everything. So the offensive line is going to fall on Bobby Johnson more. 
so the not what are you coaching them to do what what's been going on what why is evan neal struggling why is glowinski like a shell of himself shell of himself why is ben bredesen having develop, developed into a better guard andrew thomas was already him before he you got here and john michael schmitz top draft pick center not really particularly hard for centers to come in the league and be pretty good if they already been coached up so what's going on bobby let's get back to the video when you did look at the film you kind of alluded to it there when you looked at the film did you see a lot of those self-inflicted mistakes i mean it's all mistakes i'll leave it at that it's all mistakes was it a was it frustrating to go back and look at that uh i mean every game's every game has some things that you wish you could do differently and that's that happens in wins so biggest thing is you know i come away from it of i try to look at it personally as the coach is what can i do different to help the guys prepare um and that's what i've moved on to this week is to say okay what what issues presented by this opponent and that's what we've done we've really moved on to that because you got to address that right away you got to address what the upcoming opponent is because that game was how many days ago it's a long time ago and we play a, we play the next opponent sooner so that's where we're at so basically he's on to his next opponent they asked him what was the issues and basically he didn't deny it saying it was a bunch of self-inflicted issues on that offensive line so can we contribute that to lack of discipline and lack, lack of knowledge what, what are we going to contribute that that performance to was it lack of discipline or lack of coaching lack of knowledge lack of talent what was it i'm gonna keep digging and digging and digging pause until mr coach bobby johnson as long as he here as long as he's here to see his mannerisms and his interviews and try to read exactly what's going on because something is going on with this offensive line to where it looked that bad and I can't just say it's lack of talent because we got two first round picks, a second round pick. Glowinski comes from an offensive line where he was doing good and Ben Bredesen comes from an offensive line that does very good. So it's not for a lack of effort. We got a third round pick in the Zudu, a fifth round pick in McKeithen, backing those guys up. A third round pick in Pert, backing those guys up. So it's not for a lack of effort to try to fix things, but let's listen a little bit more to Bobby Johnson before we wrap this up. Look, Evan Neal did a lot of corrections, it was obviously from all accounts here, very proactive in trying to change some things about his rookie season. And then it starts and it is probably exactly what happened to him against the Cowboys last year. Yeah, I disagree, but he's improved. He's put a lot of time in and he continues to improve. So. Um, I just disagree with it. It was the same as last year for him, but it doesn't really matter because we're a group. We're not a we're not a collection of individuals. We're a group, and obviously it wasn't what we wanted. And we're going to try to improve that in the next opponent. You still got to worry about. So he says that Evan Neal has improved, and to say that he performed as bad as he did last year against the Cowboys is not true. We are a group. We are a unit. We focus on more of a unit than individual people you're supposed to focus on yourself as a unit when it comes to football because it is the ultimate team sport but i will throw this chime in there you have to see what your individuals are doing as well and what they're good at and what they're not good at what are some of the traits that we need to eliminate and what's some traits that we need to try to import into this player you got to find out what your guys do best. You got to find out what Evan Neal does best. Now, I'm not blaming you on those guys knowing how to pick up a stunt. You're supposed to learn that in college. So I can't blame that on you, Bobby, but something's not right. The communication with this offensive line cannot be good at all. I mean, by the, by the slightest, it cannot be good at all on the right side of the offensive line. Why are those two not being able, being able to communicate stunts? 
and what John Michael Schmitz could do it immediately. Ben Bredesen and Andrew Thomas do it pretty well together. What is it about Glowinski and Neil where they cannot communicate a stunt? Something is going on right there with those two guys. Why can they not com <laughs> They can't block a stunt to save their lives. Why are they not communicating? Is Evan Neal not listening? Or has Glowinski never had to do that with the Indianapolis Colts? Like, what's going on over there with those two, man? It's those two. Why are they not communicating stunts? Why are they not communicating with each other? Why is Evan Neal so slow out of stance? Why is his feet so slow? And why is not is not is it not catching on in his head? Like something has to be done with the right side of that offensive line. And I will say this, I believe communication is one of the biggest parts of why they cannot be good. Because when you when you blocking stunts, you have to communicate that unless you've been playing that playing together for years and you could just feel it from each other pause. But you have to communicate that. What where's the communication on the offensive line? Why is nobody digging into the offensive line besides Coach Dable? What where's Bobby Johnson digging into the offensive line when the offensive line is screwing up? Why why we can't get any of those screenshots? Like what's going on with the communication with those two? Do those two like playing with each other? Pause. Are they are they are their skill sets too different? I mean, do their skill sets mesh mesh with each other? Is Evan Neal that bad or is Glowinski just that bad? Is Glowinski not able to teach Evan Neal anything out there? Is Evan Neal able to pick up on anything out there? See, yeah, that game against the Cowboys, the offensive line played so bad that I want to investigate it. And get down to the nitty, nittiest of gritties. And find out exactly what's going on. Because the pressure is going to be put on the coach. Evan Neal's a first-round pick. Glowinski, he's gone after this year. They're not going to uh, pick up his third year. So the, the hot seat is going to be on you, Mr. Bobby Johnson. And you, we got to figure out what's going on. Because I believe it's lack of communication, lack of foot speed with Evan Neal, lack of strength with Glowinski to play in the NFC East. That's what I really think is going on. Because the AFC South is a totally different beast than the NFC East. The closest thing you'll get to the NFC East with the AFC South is uh, the Titans. When it comes to defensive tackles and everything. So maybe Glowinski's just not a fit for the NFC East. Maybe Evan Neal is too slow to play in the NFC East. That could be very true. And if so, we got to make some accommodations quick. But I'm going to put that way down that far on the list, man. Because I believe lack of communication, lack of execution, and maybe a lack of coaching. Those are the top three, three things I'm going to have to investigate with this offensive line. And I'm going to start with you, Mr. Bobby Johnson. And we're going to figure this thing out. But hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that big blue join button. And join the big blue crew and talk your talk with Big Pass Sports Talk. Because I'm going to talk my talk no matter what you thought. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Bobby Johnson will be on the hot seat if the offensive line does not perform against the Cardinals. 
we gonna see but appreciate you thanks for tuning in and until the next episode of new york giants full access with your boy big pass sports talk you know what it is man peace